Welcome to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, we are rapidly approaching Labor Day and it's amazing how quickly this summer has gone. I don't know if you're like me, but uh, it has been an extremely busy summer. I was uh, entering May thinking I, that I couldn't wait for things to slow down a little bit in the summertime and it really didn't uh, didn't seem to slow down like I thought it would. Um, got a little time to relax. I hope you did too. I hope you got a little vacation time and that in the last three or four months of the year here that uh, you're energized and ready to hit a very, very important time of the year. Your end is always one of the most important, most critical, most fruitful times of the year for a nonprofit organization. And I would imagine that you are already beginning to plan ahead as I am for year end and all the things we'll be doing. I'm going to be creating a series of probably anywhere between 8 to 12 videos just like I did last year preparing you for year end. So I hope that you, if you aren't already a subscriber to this channel, I hope you'll subscribe. And if you've got some friends, some colleagues, some individuals who you know uh, are fellow nonprofit leaders and you think this channel would be helpful, encourage them to subscribe, share these videos with them. And uh, it, it really is the best way for us to grow as a community, for us all to work together. It's always been my heart, my passion to help equip nonprofit leaders to be more effective in management, in human resources and HR, and also to help you, especially in this challenging area of development and fundraising. And so if you've got individuals you think would be interested, send them to this, or if you are not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button and subscribe. Well, let's dive right in to our question of the week. Our question of the week is from Kirk in Lubbock, Texas. And Kirk asks, what are some ways that you recognize new donors? Well, Kirk, thank you for that question. New donors are, boy, I'll tell you, I just, uh, I think about a new relationship and an individual that I find who has made a first-time gift to our organization and a first-time gift to your organization. Those, those are exciting times and you have got a great opportunity for building a relationship with a new friend. It's like someone who moves into your neighborhood and it, you're starting from scratch with that individual. You've got no connection with them, but what an exciting time to be able to introduce yourself just as you would the neighbor, maybe bring over a baked good or bring over a, a small care package to them uh, during their move in. The same applies for our first time partners. It's important for you to know that every study that I've ever read and of course any of my experiences over nearly 40 years in development fundraising has really revealed to me that the first gift is not the most important gift that you get from someone. It's that second gift that's the most important. But that second gift doesn't come unless you do a great job of cultivating and building a relationship after the first gift. And so that first gift begins to open up a small crack in the door, but someone is just starting to put their foot in the door. You've got to be there to open that door wide and say, come on in. We are glad to have you. Depending on the size of their gift, you might want to, at a minimum, look at sending a thank you note. You might also look at sending a handwritten thank you note 
We've tested quite a bit handwritten thank you notes to people who give gifts as small as 10, 15, 20, or 25 dollars, and we've seen some nice results. But also, we have definitely tested giving gifts to larger people whose first gift is 250, 500, a thousand dollars or more. If you have someone who is giving you a thousand dollars or more, those individuals should get a thank you call either from the a development officer or the CEO of your organization if your organization is smaller. Depending on how busy your CEO is, that individual may also make a call if there aren't a lot of gifts like that. Our organization is a larger organization. So as a result, we have a number of layers of thank you calls along the process. We have, if a gift comes in of $5,000, a mid-level caller will call. If a gift comes in at $10,000, a representative on the field will call. If a gift comes in at $25,000, one of our vice presidents will call and our executive director will call for a gift of $50,000. Now, some of you may be so small that your executive director would never call or rarely call if $50,000 was your cutoff. We also have a president that makes calls at $100,000. Our organization is rare and is an exception. So you need to really look at what's your comfort level for who can make that phone call. You've got to see, number one, you've got to look at that person's time. If you get a lot of gifts in a certain area, you may want to bump it up a little bit so the number of calls is fewer, but at least those calls are being made. It is so important and so valuable. And our partners respond so well when our executive director calls. It, it really ratchets it up another notch in the relationship. I've had people ask me before, is it wrong to have multiple people call someone? And the answer is, is it wrong to have multiple relationships with someone? And the answer is no. It's great to have multiple relationships, even with one organization. I've found over the years that if someone in the organization, a staff member, has a misstep, and they say something wrong or do something and frustrates the partner. If there is only one relationship, we most likely will lose that partner because something was done that may have frustrated or disappointed our partner. However, if we have multiple relationships, chances are the person is gonna see, that partner is gonna see that as an isolated issue and an isolated mistake. Oh, so-and-so made this decision, but I know three other staff and those individuals are really solid. I've got relationships with those people. So you will, in most cases, keep that relationship strong. So having multiple people call is not a bad thing. Is it all right to text or send an email? Absolutely it is, as long as those are not the only things that you're doing. Those come across a little bit more on the, the side of being colder mediums. A warm medium, of course, being face-to-face, -face, a phone call being the next, but when you're talking about a letter, an email, or a text, those tend to be on the colder side. So it's not wrong to do that. Think about where, how you would respond if you gave a gift to an organization and just got a dear friend, thank you for your gift of, and it was either a text or an email. You might respond positively, but it's not the same as if in addition you received a phone call or personal note at the bottom of a letter from someone and of course a face-to-face -face appointment. 
When is it appropriate to meet with a, a person face to face? Well, number one, you've got to look a little bit on the time commitment of the person you're asking to meet. Once again, if it's the executive director, you've got to look and say, do they have the time to carve out in their schedule to go? Well, now if it's a $50,000 gift, I think they need to probably make time. But if they're busy and they uh, all they can do is call someone, that's one thing. But is there someone else that could sit down? I think you've got to look at your budget. If your first gift is in Portland, Oregon, and you live in Portland, Maine, your organization, it's a lot harder to do that. So those are the kinds of things that you want to consider when you're talking about helping someone in a first gift. So I hope, Kirk, that that helped you. I appreciate so much questions like that, and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. I thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope what you heard you liked, and it is something that you find is valuable. And again, once again, share this channel with your friends and get them to subscribe as well. So it's our goal here to help you increase income and reach that goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you next week and see you in the next video.